Hello, everyone. My name is Tim Tang from Hughes, and, and today I have the privilege of speaking with Brian Sathya Nathan from Iterate AI. Brian, could you kind of help us understand what are some of the challenges that the enterprise face in operationalizing AI? Uh, great question, Tim. So typically what happens, the, the biggest challenges that enterprise face when operationalizing AI is to, is to, is to basically, uh, one is cost, second is using their existing resources, and then they are existing teams and upskill them to operationalize AI, right? Uh, those are the primary two problems that they have, right? Because when it comes to cost, the biggest challenge is a lot of the generative AI and current solutions are very uh, need GPU and are very cap, in, cap X intensive, right? So how do you leverage existing systems or make minimal amount of investments and you can operational, operationalize AI, both on the edge as well as in your cloud systems, right? So that's uh, one area there we, where we help companies and speak to a lot of leaders with in terms of what's the most efficient way to do that, right? The other is uh, the general resourcing and the upscaling, right? Because AI is a, a different technology and it's still very much at its um, early growth stages. So the technical know-how required to take the AI systems and begin to uh, put them into the, the dev systems and DevOps systems and operationalize them and to make it mm -hmm. and manage them on and monitor them on a daily basis, day in, day out, uh, is, is, is complicated. And then, of course, if you look at the resources that are doing this type of AI work are essentially who are building these solutions are essentially, um, you know, mathematical, computationally intensive data scientists and engineers. Uh, there is a big gap that exists between them as well as you know the, the 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 IT and the DevOps teams that are scaling a lot of these solutions, right? Uh, and we try to bridge that gap, right, by providing number one templated workflows, uh, and then providing and con containerizing and being able to scale a lot of the complex computer vision as well as generated generative AI type solutions, you know, because when you when you add GPUs and various types of requirements, suddenly it gets very complicated. So many version incompatibilities, different libraries, uh, they all, you know, and then try to understand that and decipher them, uh, there is a big gap. And I think that's one of the things I think we are interested in helping and solving for customers because all, I think we got to scale AI. We got to lubricate the whole process of AI, right? Thank you. Thank you, Brian. That's a very comprehensive answer. Can you, you know, there's been an enormous amount of hype of AI being able to solve all of the world's problems. Could you give us maybe your assessment of kind of what is it, what are, where do you see the limitations in terms of what, uh, of AI today? See, AI is still at its inception, especially generative AI, right, where, where it's being applied. I think there are a lot of limitations when it comes to, you know, applying it for problems. You know, AI is very good in terms of where you have a lot of prior data and then the problem has been somewhat solved in the past. AI can supercharge it, right? So that's what it, that's one of its mega powers. The other power it has is that you know, you, it's very horizontal technology. You can apply it across HR, you can apply it across, you know, operational systems, manufacturing systems. So it's a very wide vari variety of usage. But when it comes to its limitations, I think, I wouldn't call it limitations, but I think it's more of its early inceptions and it has to go through a maturity curve. Um, it has to, its governance, right? And it's, and it's, and, and the type of data it processes. Uh, there's a lot, lot to happen there. And I think, you know, it's still in its early stages. Um, the other area, I think it's got, it's got limitation. I think is security because I think AI is still, you know, going through a lot of, you know, security maturity curve where, you know, if you look at other, other IT software, it's further in the maturity curve. AI is at its early stage. But the good, good news though is there is, there are solutions coming to the market that can solve these type of problems. And we might be able to piggyback into what's what's happening, you know, what's being developed elsewhere. Um, AI is not the solution to every problem. You don't want to just throw AI for everything, right? Say you are building a, a computing game or something and, you know, saying AI to AI could develop the game, but then, you know, uh, you know using AI for, um, you know, for playing the game or for, you know, doing stuff, it's not very effective, right? But at the same time, like our virtual reality, trying to apply AI on virtual reality, 
probably not very effective. But applying AI for recommendations is great. AI, applying AI for you know computer vision is really great. Like the cases, depending on the, what the case is, AI can be applied in a more effective way. And you and I, I would always recommend senior leaders. Uh, to think through the use case first, right? Think through your use case and your business ob- uh, business objective and see how AI can help you and figure, approach from that angle, approach to like learning all the possibilities of what AI can do because it can, number one, overwhelm you. The other is it can also kind of draw you towards like the shiny shiny object uh, syndrome, right? Uh, so wanna be apl- want to objectively apply it for, for your business. This has given us a lot to kind of chew on there. Can you uh, maybe describe this where you see today the sweet spot of uh, solving uh, enterprise problems with AI? Where do you see a lot of activity and a lot being accomplished? I think there's a lot of activity that's already been happening. If you look at like that, if the, the, I always like to bucket and think of things in a very abstracted, simple manner. In my mind, I always think of AI as three three simple buckets, right? Even though there is a lot in there, right? Uh, one is basically the, the data, the data science and the data analytics bucket, bucket number one. Bucket number two is the computer vision bucket, right? Bucket number three is the generative AI buckets, right? Uh, so the data science and the using AI for data has been there for a very long time. I mean, since 2010, 2009 onwards, right? Uh, But the computer vision on kind of started catching in the 17 uh, till till now. The computer vision has actually been deployed at scale because that's that's the solution that that a lot of uh, companies have gravitated to, right? So this is these are things like you know people counting, computer powered security. Uh, you know, of camera monitoring, you know, mon- man- monitoring and manufacturing flow and all that stuff. What's catching on now? So if from a scale overall, computer vision is at a much deployed at a much, much bigger scale, right? Uh, but what's catching on right now is generative AI, specifically how generative AI can look at data, how it can actually, you know, create new content, right? So this is actually, there are two areas to think about it. One is, of course, like, um, you know, in various divisions of the company, like marketing or like merchandising or all all those divisions, how do we actually do like, you know, campaign oriented stuff, like generating content imagery for this marketing or using, you know, using, using um, any types of you know uh, copywriting right ai is being extensively used most of the tools available are doing it but the the one that i would actually say like the biggest investment where a company needs to look at creating its own ip and and using the using ai for their advantage is is basically take your proprietary data and train that uh, in ai so now you have ai that that are not not generic but actually understands you your data. And then, you know, a lot of companies have been like shutting down chat GPT and all because they are afraid that their data is going out. But how do you use a large language model privately running in your own environment, right? Or running in your own private cloud and t- and train your business processes. Now, once you do that, I think of that as a foundational system, right? A core to all the operations that happens in your organization. Now you can basically tag on several, you can light up all kinds of peripheral applications once you do that once, right? So that's where the big value is. You're really speaking to, practically speaking, how to extract business value out of your data. Absolutely, can you, absolutely. Can you, uh, can you speak to kind of any notable success stories as it relates to enterprises being able to use AI? No, absolutely. We have a lot of stories across our customers. There's one story where uh, one of the brands that we work with, uh, you know, they're a very loved brand. Uh, tweens and teens love them. And they have a lot of content uh, every every day, thousands and thousands of queries that they would have uh, on social media. But they have to respond fast to these these these, these audience, their consumers, right? If they don't respond fast enough, they suddenly lose them, right? They even get negative publicity. So they basically trained their brand, their ethos, everything using our platform. They took a large language model, trained it to understand their brand value system, their product things, the prior ratings and reviews, and it was automatically able to respond. They were able to save, I think, six times more by doing something like this, right? So that's a, that's a high level example of, you know, uh, you know, 
cost efficiencies and resource utilization, right? Uh, we have other examples where, you know, we've increased average order values, we've increased engagement times, uh, we've increased even conversion rates by applying AI at, at, at the right spots uh, where people needed it. Wow. So that's know. why I always go back to and say like, you know, you always want to look at your business case and tie all these things back into your business metric. Oh, you're speaking to like the virtual manifestation of a brand experience uh, with the customers. Can you, uh, in, from your seat then and point of view, what do you see coming next? Uh, when you look down the horizon over the next six, 12 months or so, what is it uh, that you're paying attention to as it relates to the industry of AI? Uh, great question, Tim. And, it, and this is one of those questions that super excites me. There is so much, but let me quickly summarize it into a few simple steps, right? Uh, in the 2007 time frame, we live or eight time frame, we lived in the mobile first world, right? So that means if you are a digital leader, you want to make sure your business is bought to mobile, right? 11, 12 time frame, we that sort of became in the norm and the table state. You have to have a mobile first. Uh, you know, 16, 17, 18 time frame, we lived in like the AI first world, right? Every one of your applications have to have some form of AI, right? Not generative per se, right? But some form of AI, right? Now we are getting into a new era of what you call digi uh, agent first world. What that means is mm. now you have these large language models have the ability to execute workflows, both front-end consumer workflows as well as back-end IT workflows or code generation workflows, whatever the business process workflows are. They have the ability to execute them in an autonomous manner, right? And these autonomous execution are, mm. is called agents, right? Yes. Uh, the power of agents is these agents are getting sophisticated by the day. Every day you are seeing things getting better and better. And the use cases are like limitless. And the power of this is now it can save you a lot of bottom line cost because a lot of these tasks can be executed, right? Um, I'm just giving you a simple example. And if you are in the software development industry, a lot of your code generation could be built and modified. Like say, a lot of the companies are maintaining so much of legacy code and there are billions of dollars spent in converting legacy back into modern code base, right? This, this is the type of a task an agent can do, right? Or, or even like looking at all your end consumers from your camera and basically, you know, changing your, you know, changing your ad buying strategy in real time, right? So that's a, that's a chain task of eight, 10, 20 different things that need to happen. It can be automated by an agent, right? So these agent type of businesses have become uh, capabilities are you know beginning to appear, and that's something that we are focusing on a lot. And in fact, we provide a, a drag and drop platform. Mm. So how do you actually use this type of capability to create agents in a drag and drop manner? And then on the apps, we also provide ready to eat apps for end customers uh, for uh, for large enterprises. Uh, how do how can they also take advantage of agents as well? Right. Uh, recently, we just launched a, a product called uh, Generate, which is basically you can run an entire local um, LLM in your a, in your AI PC with in, in partnership with Intel. Uh, so there, they even we even bought like workflow agents, so you could actually like generate a task and do that do a sequence of stuff all you know, run by agents. I think this uh, world is going to grow really fast because, you know, there's been a lot of talk about generative AI not getting adoption and it's only getting 6% 6 of generative AI projects have co converted into prototypes. Mm. Uh, uh, prototypes have converted into production. But with agent, I think I think that, that number is going to change very drastically. And because organization, end of the day, organizations need to see financial benefits, right? Because this, will, this can create bottom line, bottom line benefits. It's remarkable when you think about it. Right now, we're so consumed with uh, the idea of AI helping humans. What happens now when AI starts helping AI and, and what's possible in, the, in that kind of world? When we think about the future then, in light of that then, is, is there any guidance that you could provide to enterprise executives in, in terms of what they should be doing now and how they should be uh, uh, responding uh, to all the activity and all the changes that are taking place in, in the enterprise uh, IT world today? Uh, great question, Tim. I think I would first say like today is the time to act. I would rather encourage a lot of leaders to act now. Uh, start from, you know, instead of trying to learn everything in AI because it can quickly get overwhelming, uh, try to learn, try to start 
initially from thinking about what what your current business use cases are and where you may be able to apply AI, right? See what what others in the industry have done in for these use cases or like what's coming specifically for your cases. So tie it always to what you are doing, you know, on Monday on business, right? How do I apply AI? Um, second is also think about how do I apply AI across my organization? How do I create an IP? How do I create a larger value so that this become this gives me a unique advantage compared to all my competition what are those use cases right those are that's where i would actually think of think about ai because then once you start thinking about your business first and then ai next uh, it gets very exciting because because you know every business is unique every business is has, has has nuances you can apply and take advantage of very well said brian thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us Likewise, Tim, it was a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. Everyone, I've been speaking with Brian Southia Nathan from Iterate AI.